We live on Earth, a magnificent planet. To the best of our limited knowledge, it's the only place in the universe that sustains life. We've only begun to explore the vast links and complexities of life, yet we destroy faster than we discover. At this crucial moment in the history of humankind, we are making Earth a place that is becoming alien to life as we know it. Every day, a hundred species become extinct. They no longer have an environment in which to live. The warning signs should be clear for us. Evolution ends with extinction. Our time on Earth may be passing. Unless we find the means and the will to meet a few simple rules of survival, we too may become extinct. Earth will simply shrug us off. This program is about what we must do to survive. Some of what you're about to hear will be frightening. It may seem overwhelming, but we have it in our power to do something about the state of our world. Down to Earth will equip you with a plan for survival in the years ahead. We hope you'll leave this program with the kind of optimism we'll all need to make the world a better place for ourselves and our children. The problems are massive, but the answers begin with each of us making small personal changes. By recognizing the enormous power of the purse, and by understanding that the quietest voice can change the world. No significant change will happen until we recognize our responsibility for the planet. Quite simply, the environment is the most important issue of today. Many other well-known Australians will take you along the path to the 90s. Your ability to survive is about to be tested. Down to Earth will challenge your knowledge and your values. You'll pay a visit to number six Captain Cook Drive as a detective. There you'll meet the Australis family and pick clues to a unique murder mystery the slow death of planet Earth. What makes it different is that we know the killer. It's every man, woman and child on the planet. The real puzzle is how it's happening and why. Bob's a hard worker and it's paying off. He's active in Neighbourhood Watch and the Volunteer Fire Brigade. But he's not too keen about greenies. I've read some articles, I've seen a few items on the TV. Everyone's talking about it, that's for sure. Yes, the weather's changing weather changes. I don't know whether it's the ozone layer or the greenhouse effect or what it is. But what am I supposed to do about it? I mean, I can't change the world. I know the greenies want us to panic. Then they can lock up all their resources so no one can use them. Sonia would like Bob to spend less time at work. She bought a second-hand computer to do word processing. The money helps with mortgage payments. It gives her independence. And she's at home when the kids finish school. I'm glad we live in Australia. A girlfriend of mine came out from Europe last year and she said rivers were dead and forests were dying. <laughs> well, that can't happen here, can it? Although, I must say I'm concerned about what future the children will have. But <laughs> I could never be a protester. Amanda is 16 and thinks it's boring when her mother regards her as a child. Mum and Dad are the last people on earth to understand her. It's about time they faced it. The older generation has made a mess of the world and we're going to have to do something about it. I just don't understand how they could let it happen. Jason is 14. He'd rather be riding his skateboard, but his dog needs a wash and his dad wants him to do some homework. We've been doing a lot of stuff at school about the ozone layer and the greenhouse effect. 
There's going to be a lot more cancers in the world. And the world could get flooded. But Dad reckons they're just trying to scare us for some reason. Bob and Sonia, Amanda and Jason, are like most of us. Almost every step they take does something to damage the Earth's environment. As we approach the 90s, strong voices are emerging with important messages that begin to be heard across the globe. One of the strongest and most effective of these voices is Canadian geneticist and author David Suzuki. It is our, our demand for more, our demand that we must have growth and greater material wealth that is ultimately putting an intolerable load on the planet. Mm -hmm. 